Okay, today guys we're going to be talking about navigating the Bowen River. So we'll give you a basic understanding of how to get from the boat ramp into the ocean, including the height of the bridge, the depth of the river, the bar crossing, and what navigational aids you need to know about to be able to do this safely. So there's a couple of options when you want to launch a boat. Uh, there's Ocean Grove or Bowen Heads. Ocean Grove's got one ramp and there's a couple over the Bowen Head side. So the Bowen Heads ramps, there's a couple there, they're pretty close together, both accessible by River Parade. Both of the ones over the Bowen Head side are single lane, a little bit less parking than the Ocean Grove, but spread between them, probably not too bad. And one of them's got a floating jetty. The ramp on the Ocean Grove side is uh, dual lane. It's probably better for handling offshore boats, so if you've got a bigger boat, you want to be uh, heading over the Ocean Grove ramp. There's toilets up the other end. Uh, near the entrance to the golf club there. There's floating jetties and there's a fielding table there for when you get back. Hopefully you've caught something and um, it's a good facility there to clean your fish. The boat ramp there is quite current affected so we believe the river can run up to about 8 knots uh, so there's a fair bit of water moving fairly fast so it can be quite a hazard when you're trying to get your boat on or off the trailer. There's a reasonable amount of parking there for your trailer and your car and the Ocean Grove boat ramp can be accessed off Guthridge Street. If you're into your personal watercraft, canoes, maybe um, your little sailboat, things like that, there's a little concrete ramp over the bow and head side and that can be found towards the end of Car Street there. So now we're going to get into navigating the river safely. I can't stress enough for you guys to keep yourselves up to date. So at the time this video is made, all the navigational aids that I'm going to tell you about, the height of the bridge, the depth of the river, all that is current. But things like that can change. So, you know, the depth of the river is changing all the time. You need to stay up to date and you can do that easily. So one of the easiest ways is to have a look online. You can see notices to mariners. We're going to put some links in the description. So make sure you check those out. Regional channels. Port of Melbourne, things like that, and you know they put things out. Let's say one of the navigational aids is um, not working. Let's say one of the navigational aids has floated away in the ocean or something like that and isn't there. You go to head out and you're looking for that navigational aid and it's not there. Uh, probably better to know before you leave, especially um, when you can get yourself in a bit of trouble if you're not sure what you're up to. Another good spot is to um, ask people at the boat ramp, have a chat. Local knowledge, can't beat it. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to people, we're all pretty friendly down here I find. So have a go at that. There's some uh, really good signs at the boat ramps too, so check them out before you head off. I'll give you a little bit of extra information or information that you might not already know. Also, if you're not familiar with the bar crossing especially, uh, go up to the bluff on the Bowen Head side. It's a great vantage point. You can check out what the ocean's doing. You can see where the waves are breaking for that bar crossing. So yeah, Bluff Road, Bowen Head side, I can tow my boat up and around there. Um, I can get around, I've got a 17 foot boat, so most of you guys should be able to tow your boat up and around there, have a look out, see what's going on with the bar crossing, the river. Uh, really good vantage point, so I do recommend if you're not, not a regular, go up there, have a look first, and make yourself um, a lot safer when you're traveling out across the bar. Right, I now we start back at the boat ramp. Travel in the river, five knot limit. Please respect the five knot limit. Uh, lots of people use the river, especially in summer. Get really busy, you got stand up paddle boarders, blokes anchored up in their tinnies trying to catch a whiting or something. So just, just respect that limit. Uh, most of us have got to stick around the five knots anyway because the river is shallow. At low tide, I reckon the shallow spot is about a metre, a metre deep from the top of the water to the, you know, the bottom of the river. And my sounder reads about 0.4 of a metre, so I haven't got much room there to move. Just a uh, little 17 foot Haynes Hunter. So, you know, you have to be aware that she's a shallow river. So the length of the river from the Ocean Grove boat ramp right out across the bar is channel marked. If you don't know how to read channel markers, don't go. Go and find out, go and learn. It's a red and a green pole. 
work it out before you go. I only say it like that because I've seen too many people hit sandbars in that river. Uh, it's just just blows my mind. It's channel marked and people are still going to the shallow spots at high tide, hitting the sandbar. Find out, do your research, make it safe for you and everyone else that has to use the river. So the river changes dramatically between high tide and low tide. Looks completely different. The bar changes its behaviour. And obviously the height of the bridge is going to change. Very important. These blokes with, um, you know, solid biminis, stuff like that that you can't take down, you guys are going to have to time your run in and out. Now the height of the bridge at high tide is 1.9 metres. So you have 1.9 metres from the top of the water to the bottom of both of the bridges at high tide. This is calculated at mean high water springs. Weather conditions can obviously change this. They can make the clearance less. An incoming tide, big swell, southerly wind, stuff like that, can make that potentially less than 1.9 metres. So that's all the information I'm going to give about the height of the, the bridge. You know, 1.9 metres of air between the top of the water and the bottom of both of the bridges. And you guys can work out from there whether you can fit under, what tide you have to be going out, what tide you've got to come in on. Uh, you certainly don't want to be running your boat into the bridge. Right, so we've navigated the channel up the river, under the bridge, and we're about to head out across the, the bar crossing. If you don't know how to cross a bar crossing, don't go. If you need to know how to find out about bar crossings, go and find out. Go with someone else first. Get them to teach you. Get online, but be very cautious of what information you do take in about crossing a bar. I mean, there's heaps of good information there on the internet about how to cross a bar, but you've got to be careful because you know what the internet's like. It's not all correct. So crossing the bar, uh, one of the main hazards of this bar is how shallow it is. It can still be, you know, metre deep where the waves are starting and only a couple of metres deep where um, you know they, they can be breaking so you've got to be onto it you you want to be very aware of the fact that the river is very shallow at the bar crossing last thing you want to do is um, you know be a bit cool with your mates jump a wave drive your uh, motor straight into the sand which you know your motor is always going to come down first when you jump your boat so just be very aware to respect the depth of the water at the bar crossing. Also know guys that it is mandatory for you to be wearing your life jackets when you're crossing the bar. It doesn't matter the size of your boat, anything like that. Uh, it's a time of heightened risk so it's mandatory for you to be, have your life jackets on. A couple of other hazards when you're heading out is the Arungal wreck. The boilers from that wreck actually stick out of the water at low tide. And then on the other side, you've got the bluff, which is also shallow ground. So you've made it out. You're out fishing. There's uh, some more hazards out there. There's a couple of shallow reefs off 13th Beach that break quite significantly. Don't want to be on the wrong side of those. So just, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to drive your boat in the ocean, but you need to be aware of the local hazards before you go. So... Get around, ask someone, get up that bluff, have a good look. Have a good look at the area before you head out. Be aware that the Bowen Heads Bluff side is a marine park, so no fishing in there. Respect it, know the rules of it. So if you're not familiar with the navigational aid, you really need to find out before you go. To bring you back in, there's some lead mark towers and there's also a sector light arrangement, you know, on the Ocean Grove side. They're certainly, you know, if you know how to use them, straight back in, no worries. If you don't know how to use them, they're no good to you. So, you know, you want to find out all that information before you go. It's all available on, online. Barwon Coast Committee, they release notice to mariners. Keep yourself up to date. Very important. Things change all the time. Stuff breaks. Markers aren't there. Markers are there. New things are installed. So... You really want to be onto it 
if you want to navigate safely out of the Barwon River into the ocean and get yourself back safely as well. So a quick recap guys, you've got some good facilities to get yourself into the river. You've got some good navigational aids to get yourself up the river. You know, you've got the bridge to worry about, the depth of the water. Once you get past that, you've got the bar crossing. So, you know, find out about bar crossings. Get yourself back in. You've got other navigational aids that can help you out. Don't just rely on all this electronic stuff you've got in your boat. It can fail. I had all my tracks disappear the other week. Um, so, you know, if you're just relying on the tracks that you're using, the tracks that you're making on the way out to get back, they might not be there when you're trying to come back. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully we've given you enough information about what's available in the river, outside the river, so you can navigate it safely, get your family in and out safely, get your mates in and out safely. That's what it's all about. So, you know, go out, enjoy, be safe, stay informed, stay up to date. Very important, stay up to date. This video has been made today. Things change tomorrow. So, you know, use what's available to you. Lastly, guys, don't forget, if you've travelled a couple of hours and you've come down and the weather isn't what you were expecting it was and it's quite rough, there's heaps of other options. Queenscliff, Clifton Springs, St Leonard's, heaps of places really close where you can still take your boat out, go for a fish. There's no use in risking it when the ocean's quite rough and uh, there's so many other good options available really close within a short drive. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. Got a few other videos there, spearfishing, stuff like that. That's what we're into. So enjoy your time out there in the water, guys. Cheers.